Hey! Welcome back to The Big Big Show. My name is Matteo, and I am still yet not quite going to drink a beer. Next time, I've got a lot of beers on my list that I'm going to be hitting for my trip to London. But, uh, saving that for the end. Right now, Doctor Who, all the time. Well, that was special, wasn't it? So I'm going to talk a little bit about Doctor Who because I am an old school Doctor Who fan. I have been watching Doctor Who since 82-ish, somewhere around there, 83, you know, when I was like two. Channel 11, WDTW in Chicago, used to show Doctor Who at 5.30 in the afternoon. It was like 3, 2, 1, contact, some show I don't remember and then Doctor Who at 5.30. I, I don't remember any specifics about any episodes that I saw. Uh, I, I sort of have a vague memory of a rubber monster of some kind, perhaps a Zygon, I'm not sure. But I do very distinctly remember seeing uh, Tom Baker's big face and that amazing Doctor Who theme that we have all known to grow and love. At some point, probably about a year later, they started showing Doctor Who at 11 o'clock on Sunday nights. Sunday nights, what a powerful night! on the old PBS station in Chicago, WTTW in Chicago, showed Monty Python at 10 o'clock, showed Dave Allen at large at 10.30, and then Doctor Who at 11. And then what they would do is that instead of showing just half-hour episodes like they did back in Britain in the day, what they would do is they would just string them all together to make one big, long, epic hour-and-a-half, two-hour episode, depending on how many episodes. And then if it was anything bigger than four episodes, which would be almost two hours, uh, then they would give us the dreaded continued next time. Now, of course, that didn't happen a lot. Most of the episodes were only three, four episodes long, half-hour episodes long, so we'd be fine, but uh, it was really nice to be able to, like, get them all in one big dose, and you wouldn't be, you know, week to week. Rah. Of course, now, of course, Doctor Who's just an hour long, plain and simple, and you can see why it's nicer that way. And then, of course, right after... No matter how late Doctor Who ended, the last thing WTTW would show before going off the air would be the two Ronnies on Sunday night. Although my dad was recording them so we could watch them the next day, the biggest problem was is that I couldn't wait. Sunday night, sure enough, 11 o'clock rolls around, and boom! I'm ready to watch some Doctor Who. I should also add that, just to make matters worse, Sunday nights also had the Doctor Demento show. So I, from time to time, stuck in a cassette, turned down the volume, recorded that. If you can remember what a cassette was. It looks like this. I'd stick it a cassette, record uh, Dr. Demento while watching Doctor Who. It was a night of doctors. So about those times that I started watching at uh, late night on Sunday nights where was uh, Peter Davidson started. It, I, honestly, I can remember creeping downstairs. My sister has this memory too. Creeping downstairs and looking around the corner as my dad was watching. And uh, it was an episode I would later become known as Castro Valva. And it's the scene where Tegan is like rubbing lipstick along the side of the TARDIS walls trying to figure out her way in and out, and uh, the, it was getting so hot inside the TARDIS that the lipstick was melting. Uh, that's a very specific memory I have, but definitely I know that that was the beginning of the Fifth Doctor. And the Fifth Doctor at that point sort of became my Doctor, because that was when I started watching, and you know, that's what they say, whoever your first Doctor you watched was became your Doctor. Now, of course, I eventually fell in love with uh, the Third Doctor, too, once we started going back and watching those episodes. John Pertwee was awesome, and, I, and one of my favorite episodes that I can remember from the past was Inferno, which I just recently bought for my dad on DVD, and we watched it, and uh, that episode is really good, and it still holds up. So when The Doctor got rebooted back in 2005, uh, no one was more excited than me because I was such a big fan of uh, the past. So, of course, I was, I was able to procure <laughs> them on the internet back in the day. And so, uh, I mean, I watched that whole first season and loved it. I was like, all right, Doctor Who's back. And, you know, Eccleston was fun. And, you know, it was funny watching that first episode. I remember thinking to myself, like, well, we really do have to explain everything again, don't we? We got to talk about what a TARDIS is and what a Time Lord is. And, you know, of course, then that shocking thing to find out that all the Time Lords had already been wiped out. And it sort of made the Doctor mysterious again because he had this past that, you know, this new past that we didn't know about. So that was really exciting. Not to mention the whole dialogue like Time Lord War and what, you know, that is. That's, uh, you know, 
my imagination of how amazing that war is is uh, awesome. Uh, you know, right away we lose Eccleston and we go into David Tennant. And, you know, eventually at some point BBC was America was like, maybe we should start showing these, you know. And so they started showing those, which was awesome. Uh, you know, and eventually by, I think, Matt Smith's second season, BBC America and BBC, the BB regular BBC in England were caught up with each other. So needless to say that when I got this trip coming to... Uh, England. I was very excited because I was like, well, we should, uh, if we're going to make some side trips, because a friend of mine wanted to go to Stonehenge, which you've seen in the last episode. But uh, I really, really want to go to Cardiff and I want to do the Doctor Who experience and want to check it all out and get the, you know, true thing. Because I knew I was missing Doctor Who, the new episode of Doctor Who, by literally hours. The lucky thing is that while I was in London, I did actually get to catch an episode of Doctor Who, got to watch it, and Oddly enough, and perfectly enough, it was Rose, the very first episode with Chris Eccleston. So, it's kind of neat, and I got to watch it in London, you know, kind of... <laughs> with uh, that said, here's some stuff from the Doctor Who experience. So, after freezing, like here, in front of Stonehenge, here, me and Jeff, still cold, in front of Stonehenge, and then at the castle, near Stonehenge, still cold, me and Jeff, top of the world to y'all. Coming up here is a uh, panorama from the castle of Salisbury. It looks beautiful, right? Then to the pub for some strong bow and a hot dog. And then we hopped on a train that night and headed off to Cardiff. Because that's where the Doctor Who experience is. And here we are in Cardiff, right over there. So here, of course, is the outside of the Doctor Who experience. Really cool. And when you enter, there's a Dalek to greet you. Super cool murals also, that one of Davros, the Cybermen, and this one of uh, more Dalek and more Cybermen, and this really cool print. And then the actual ride part of the experience is really fun because you sort of go in and you're watching this trailer for Doctor Who, and it's talking about Amy and other things, and shown clips, and then all of a sudden in the middle of the screen, you get the crack in the wall. And then you have to go through the crack in the wall. And then once you do that, uh, you find yourself on uh, Starship Britannia, the TARDIS lands. And it's, uh, you know, Matt Smith and he's doing a, <clears throat> you know, his Doctor Who thing, which is amazing. And here's a really poor impression of how that whole thing begins. Hello, world. Oh, sorry. I was looking for Amy Pond. You don't look like Amy Pond pond at all. No, you just look like a bunch of shoppers, don't you? Well, don't worry, everything will be okay. Well, everything won't be okay, but you're a bunch of shoppers, so I don't want to s scare you. You see, what's happened here is that I'm stuck in the Pandorica. Well, the Pandorica too, really. They had a spare, which is cheating, really, if you think about it. It's not even a different color. Boring! And you actually end up going into the TARDIS, you help fly the TARDIS, and then there are Daleks, and angels, and uh, you know, it's just a really good time, the whole thing through the ride part of it. It's awesome. No, he does it with the bow ties. So here is the picture I wish I had a costume for, standing awesomely outside the old school TARDIS. Here's another shot of that one for you, taking you into the interior of the uh, Fifth Doctor TARDIS. This is Idris's TARDIS, the Tenth Doctor's Council, and then a uh, full pack of that, and then the panorama of that, which is awesome. It was the whole entire Tenth Doctor set there. That was awesome. Davros giving me the evil eye, that bastard. His minions coming after me as well. Daleks. Cybermen with his big scary brain poking out of there as well with the... Uh, Fourth Doctor's robot from his first episode, and then uh, some creepy, scary little cherubs. Then the silence. Funny, I don't remember taking this pic. Amy Pond's outfit it still looks hot even though it's not on her. Uh, the snowman with an awesome mural behind that. The uh, Eleventh Doctor's TARDIS with a close-up of the Eleventh Doctor's outfit. Then the Eleventh Doctor's outfit, which will take us into the Third Doctor's outfit, John Pertwee. Of course, the fourth doctor and his wacky little scarf. The fifth doctor in his cricket attire. And the sixth doctor, of course, which was completely appalling. The ninth doctor in his awesome leather jacket. And of course, the tenth doctor in his amazing suit, which we love in it. Again, my hero shot there, which I love. And then me standing in front of the console, which also is amazing. And of course, this wacky shot, which I love as well. 
Now for this is outside the window, that is uh, BBC Cardiff right there where they film all of Doctor Who. This of course is where Blonde Felfoch Pasimir de Slavine from Rexacor Cephalopatorius had her uh, infamous meal with the Doctor. This is the famous I'd say uh, Millennium Center in Welsh like they do here in Cardiff, but uh, here's what the word looks like. I don't know how to say it. So if YouTube has taught me anything, what that actually says is Millennium Camru. Millennium Camru. If you want to go back and look at the rest of that, you can't even figure out what the rest of that is saying. It's ridiculous, but Millennium Camru, if I'm right. Surely the internet will tell me if I'm wrong. But that Welsh is a crazy language, let me tell you that. <clears throat> look up on YouTube on how to speak Welsh, there's some awesome things on there. All right, well, look, I'm wrapping this up because I'm already way long. But next time, beers and all those other really cool sites that everybody wants to see in London, like Big Ben, Parliament. There's no roundabout there. <gasps> I gave away the secret.